I have just made the most amazing score. Food scraps and manure is hard to come by. It's a commodity. People use it to fertilize things. And why, sh why should they just give it away? I found a local farm stand, brand new farm stand, and they were happy to please. I bought some stuff there and they filled up my bucket with pig manure. So I've got a place to start. I'm filling my bucket with water. And I'll crack open this lovely bucket of methanogen laden pig manure. Oh yeah, look at that. And it's a slurry. It's a beautiful, beautiful slurry. Can you see that? It smells awesome. All right, here we go. Got, this is about 20 pounds of manure. Fresh, very fresh pig manure. Oh yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Just awesome. Tell you what, a good set of gloves. I'm gonna have to upgrade to nitrile gloves. A good set of gloves and this operation is your friend. That yeah, is for sure. 20 pounds of gold. Actually, I think this was about 24 pounds total. This stuff is heavy. Okay, it was mostly water. I'm gonna guess that was 80% water. Which means it's only about five pounds maybe of four or five pounds of manure. So I'm gonna fill this up because we need the water for hydrolysis to start breaking down. We also wanna remove the oxygen from the system. So the fuller this barrel is, the less oxygen there is to react with the methanogens and potentially kill them. I'm gonna fill this up to about three quarters, maybe two thirds full. And then I'm gonna to have to start begging some more material. I'm gonna start using my own food scraps, my own household waste, some garden waste. I've got, I don't know what I've got. I've got a lot of grass. That doesn't digest too well, but it's gonna go in the mix for sure. There's some wildflowers. They probably do pretty well. And uh, I'm pretty sure my friends eat, so. <laughs> I'm gonna get them to start composting. Well, at least put their food scraps in a bucket and ship them to me. And if they want the compost, they can have it back in the slurry that comes out of this. We got our heater and our filler tube and cap. Screw this all tight. A little water for the gas trap. All right, we'll tighten that up. And we're off to gas land. Yes. I've just plugged in my Watts up meter so that I can record the energy used to heat the biogas slurry. As you can see, it's drawing 870 Watts. And over time, we can see how much energy total it uses to heat up the slurry. We're at like 65 degrees and we want to get up to around 100. It'll take a little while to get there, but it shouldn't take much energy to maintain 100 degrees. After three hours and 53 minutes, we used 3.46 kilowatt hours to increase the temperature from 65 to 100. It's time to expand the diet of our digester. I've got about six pounds of food scraps here and I'm going to grind those up and feed them to the digester. The outdoor sink and food grinder does a great job in processing this stuff fairly easily. The benefit of a food grinder is that you get some nice small particles that make the chemistry work a lot more efficiently. This is day three and there's still no signs of biogas production after pouring in the pig poop. That's 
perfectly fine after a week is when I start to expect some gas to appear. I actually did overfeed it in my enthusiasm to uh, get that uh, pig poo in here and start it. <clears throat> and there is a limit to how much this thing can take. And it's based on the volume and the volatile solid content of the feedstock that you're adding to it. That's a little more detail that I want to get into right now, but that recipe information is all in the guide. Then we got about half a bucket of food scrap slurry with water. I should really find a funnel. Yep, really need a funnel. Excellent. All right, we are all in. You want to give this a shake every day, break up any of the scum that might accumulate on top. We currently have about 95 degrees in there. I'll warm it up a little bit more and uh, keep her going. <laughs> 